Welcome back, nerds. This is gonna be a slightly different video than our normal Vim and Tmux adventures. This is specifically a community video where I answer your questions. We're gonna talk about a lot of cool things like Ruby on Rails and NeoVim, answers to some of the questions about these Vim shorts we've been doing, what it's like having this amazing mustache, and more. It's gonna be fun, so let's get into it. Typically in our videos, we're showing you an end result, and then the video is how we get to that end result. Now, along the way, as we've been making these videos, we've been seeing a bunch of amazing feedback from you guys. Seriously, it's been so cool having this amazing community that we're kind of building up here. And we've been kind of wondering, how can we answer your questions? And I think the best way to do it is to have a monthly series where we can answer questions and sort of just go back and forth with you guys. You know, I'm a real person, you're real people. We should talk, we're friends, right? Right? No? Oh, well, okay. And as members, we have a special place for you. So make sure you ask your questions in the comments. We will compile those and your questions will get answered first. Thanks a lot, gang. We appreciate it. Now, one of the questions we've seen is from this user, Alfonder Zero. He says, thanks for the great course. I am a many year Vim user and I'm trying to move into NeoVim. We've already configured and installed a lot of plugins, but what for? How do I index a multi-file project and how do I find a definition for occurrences of a symbol? Well, this is a really great question and it's something that we've covered in NeoVim for noobs. The simple answer is to find the definition for the occurrences of a symbol, you want to have an LSP configuration for your NeoVim and you want that LSP configuration to be set up for that language. Now, there are many different plugins and different setups for LSPs, but essentially the way it goes is something like this. You have a few different plugins. Mason is the thing that will help you install all of your LSP tooling. You can open it by typing colon capital M Mason. And these are all of the packages I have installed through Mason right now. Then you have Mason LSP config, which allows Mason and LSP config to talk a little bit better. And then you have NVIM LSP config, which is the actual configuration file where you set sort of the options and the key bindings and which languages you want set up. So then what happens is in your LSP config, you wanna have an entry for every single language you wanna support in NeoVim. And you just pass the capabilities of NVIM LSP config and you're good to go. Then you can set some key bindings for some of the common actions you might take, like go to definition, go to references, code actions, refactors, whatever you wanna call it. This basically gives you all the power of LSPs in NeoVim. This one file, it is 42 lines of configuration and it's kind of all you need for LSP stuff. Now I know I went through this pretty quickly, but we've covered this in NeoVim for noobs. And I like to think if you watch those videos, you should have all the tools kind of available to be able to build this out. I hope that answers your question. I guess more specifically for me, if I were in a Rails project, I have a Ruby LSP and I can go to definition and references by typing leader GR for references and leader GD for go to definition. And that is the LSP for Ruby on Rails working for me in my NeoVim setup. Now, Brittany Freak, Britney Spears, by the way, I'm also a Britney freak, if that's the case. Anybody else get the feeling of seeing Magnum explain his retro 80s terminal settings with that keyboard, but better resolution? The sudden low key hype around Tmux and Vim, I call it new wave programming. Now that's kind of cool and I love the name New Wave Programming, but for me, this is all kind of old hat. You see, I have loved Vim ever since I first used it about 12 years ago, that was my very first job as a programmer. Specifically, I remember I was a, what's called build and release engineer. It was kind of a DevOpsy role before DevOps had a name. Either way, my manager used Vim and I wanted to use it too. So I wrote all kinds of bash shell scripts and Ruby scripts in Vim. And ever since I just cannot seem to reproduce my productivity in any other editor, Vim just is perfect for me. So new wave programming is a cool name, but for me, it's just how I program always. And calling me Magnum, I'm assuming you like my mustache. I do too. <laughs> now in one of our Vim shorts, someone asked the question, what's the difference with a plugin and percent %s this, that GC? And someone had a really great response that says, in one of them, you need to install another plugin and the other is built in. Specifically, the replacing command is built in, percent %s. That's built into NeoVim and Vim. In my opinion, it is better to use built-in tools. Now, I think this touches on an interesting topic. This channel is kind of about just showing you cool stuff that I find interesting that I think you might find interesting as well. 
I love plugins. I think they abstract great pieces of functionality and give you a nice easy way to do really complex things in NeoVim that's otherwise kind of hard to understand. But I think it's really great to learn how these tools work and to know the underlying commands that you are running when you use some of these plugins. That's why we created a lot of these shorts and that's why we created NeoVim for noobs. It's really to understand the tools that are going into your setup. And I love the concept of like progressively learning, knowing the basics for how something works and then building on those basics. When you're learning anything, starting with the basics and building a foundation always results in a much better grasp of any topic, really. And we've been working with a company, Brilliant.org, whose platform applies the same ideas. When you first sign up, they ask you questions to try and understand what foundation you're working from. If you're a beginner or advanced, they put you on the right path so that you always wind up with a clear understanding of the topic. Of course, I wouldn't want you to jump into NeoVim and use plugins you don't understand. Now, Brilliant doesn't cover NeoVim. Thank goodness, or I'd be out of a job. But if you're interested in learning about the basics of Python or learning about the basics of programming in general, or even just learning how to think like a programmer, they've got you covered. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org typecraft or check out the link in the description below. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So check them out. They're pretty great. Let's get back to NeoVim, shall we? And personally, I think you should use what you like the best. If you love a plugin that uses the sed command to replace things, that's great. If you wanna use the built-in tooling, that's also great. You should do you. Recently, I asked people on Twitter um, if I should do live streaming, and a lot of people essentially said, do what you want. If you like live streaming, do it. If you don't, don't do it. And that's kind of the same attitude here. Do what you like, because in the end, we're all neckbeards, and we're in this together as friends. Another comment, and Kush Roy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, said, you got a really cool tattoo in your neck, but why does it change? Yeah, Robert, why do you keep putting tattoos on my face? I told you to stop, God. And then we have another user here, the bad Fred, who said, I have tabs in my Linux terminal client. What is the advantage of Tmux over tabs? And it kind of ties back to sort of the underlying theme of this video, which is you do you. If you love tabs, go ahead and use tabs. If you love Tmux, go ahead and use Tmux. I can show you really quickly one of the reasons why I love Tmux or maybe a few of them. But for me, Tmux has an amazing setup where I can navigate between NeoVim panes and Tmux panes using just one keystroke. We just did a video on this. This is in the Tmux for Noobs series. So check that out if you haven't yet. But for me, with Tmux and NeoVim, I can just hit Control, H to go left and L to go right, and it'll automatically navigate between NeoVim panes and Tmux panes. Let me split it again to show you. I hold control and type K to go up, H to go left, L to go right, J to go down, K to go up. This is amazing. It's kind of like a superpower. You can imagine if I'm working on a project and I want to run something in like my REPL or whatever, I can just copy some example, easily switch over to another Tmux pane, and then paste in what I copied, no problem. That's just one use case, but that's the thing that I use Tmux for all the time, not to mention all the other benefits you get like persistence, handling sessions. For example, I have multiple sessions here. One is for my configuration, one is for a Rails project. This is also how I use Rails day to day in my day job. I have multiple Rails projects I work on and I have them each in their own individual sessions in Tmux. Tmux to me is amazing and it's a lot better than tabs, but again, if you like tabs, go ahead and use them. Don't feel bad about it. I'm not judging you. I like you. I hope we're friends. And a comment from a long time ago that I've seen a couple of times is, I'm wondering how he got the auto indent. I can't find the key or command how to indent a whole section. Does anyone know? Auto indenting is something I do almost automatically in Vim because it's such an easy command, but I kind of forget that some people might not know it. So I apologize if I never really went over this before. But let me just screw up some indenting here in this file. Essentially, if you have tree sitter installed or some sort of plugin that knows the indentation of the file you're currently in, what you can do is you can highlight a section that is not currently indented correctly using the V motion, which is visual select, and then hitting equal. Equal will indent based on the current indenting rules in that file. You can also type a range and do equal equal. So if I do two equal equal, that will format the next two lines by auto indenting them. It's kind of a built-in thing in Vim. And again, I, I forget that maybe people don't know that. So I apologize if I didn't go over it in my videos, but that's, that's how I do it. 
And to add on to that, there's many different ways to do a lot of different things in NeoVim. And we're gonna be making a bunch of videos on Vim itself, talking about like beginner level Vim, like commands you need to know, interesting tooling, stuff that maybe you didn't know that you might find useful even as a more advanced Vim user. So be sure to subscribe because we're gonna be doing a lot of videos in April on Vim. And we're going to be covering things like the said command. Refactoring, but without using any LSP functionality. Maybe we'll talk about auto indenting. I don't know, but we're gonna be covering this in future videos. A question we get asked all the time is, how do we set up Ruby on Rails in NeoVim? And that's a fantastic question because that's what I do. So let's just go over from a high level what I think it takes to make NeoVim a great editor and what we try to do with NeoVim for noobs. And then we'll talk about how to set up Ruby on Rails in NeoVim. So basically when we're talking about like a great NeoVim setup, I think NeoVim needs three things to make it great. Those three things are LSP and Telesense. Of course you need that for any modern text editor. You're not just gonna work professionally on a project without some sort of IntelliSense in your editor. You need good syntax highlighting and you need good formatting and linting. Linting like ESLint or Prettier is kind of the backbone of a good functioning software engineering team. Everyone needs to write code that looks the same so that's easy to understand what goes where, basically. So if we split these three requirements out, we talk about LSP and formatting, linting. In each one of these buckets, there's a couple of really common tools that we use all the time. So in LSP, if we're talking about languages like JavaScript, we will use TS Server. Um, Ruby on Rails, you can use a bunch of different things, but my favorite, and I'll show you why, is Solar Graph. And for other languages, uh, there's you know Python, which is like black for Python. I'm not sure if that's an LSP or a linter. Like I said, I don't know a lot about Python's environment, but that's what you would use for LSP. This gives you the IntelliSense, the go-to definition, the refactoring, all that cool stuff. Now, when it comes to synth Syntax highlighting, this is actually a lot simpler. Tree sitter is amazing with syntax highlighting. That's all we use, tree sitter. It works great. And for formatting and linting, there are some other tools we use. So for JavaScript, there's Prettier or ESLint. And in Ruby on Rails, there's Rubocop. Rubocop is extremely similar to Prettier or ESLint for JavaScript. That's kind of like the analogy. So now let's explore each of these layers that make NeoVim a great editor and how we use this for Ruby on Rails in NeoVim. If we go to our configuration and I open it up, I can go to my lspconfig.lua file. Again, we have covered this in a series called NeoVim for Noobs. If this is new to you, then please subscribe check out that series and then come back here. In our NVIM LSP configuration, we have an entry for Solar Graph. This is how we set up the LSP configuration for Ruby on Rails. Now, there's a Ruby LSP for Shopify. I've tried this before, but for some reason it doesn't work that great. Now, Solar Graph is a gem that's been around forever but it uses the same IntelliSense features that Microsoft's language server protocol implements. So it talks to the language server protocol API natively. And so this is, I mean, it's perfect. I don't know if Solar Graph was always set up this way. I feel like it wasn't, but it is now. So I use it. And the way to use it in our LSP setup is if you have Mason, you wanna make sure you have Solar Graph installed or it's a gem, so you can just make sure you have gem install Solar Graph on your machine. And then that's all you have to do. You have Solar Graph's LSP IntelliSense stuff working in all your Ruby projects. So for Ruby on Rails, we use Solar Graph as our LSP. We use obviously Tree Sitter for the syntax highlighting. And then for formatting and linting, let me just show you really quick how we use Rubocop. Now we have NunLS, which is kind of a fork of NullLS. It's almost a wrapper of NullLS that's being updated because the original NullLS was deprecated. And NunLS is really great at talking to these disparate systems that are more static, like formatters and linters. Think ESLint, Prettier, etc. The best linter for Ruby is Rubocop. It's been around again forever, but it's the same exact thing as Prettier, same exact thing as ESLint. You have a Rubocop.yaml configuration file in your project and everyone's code adheres to the same principles, the same rules. And all you need to do again is make sure in Mason you have Rubocop installed, or like I said, it's a gem and you make sure Rubocop is installed and you have these entries in your null LS setup. That will give you the linting and the formatting that you would want in a Ruby project. So if I go to a Rails project, I can do stuff like, you know, delete this 
and I see immediately some feedback and I can hit leader GF, which again, we covered in NeoVim for noobs, but leader GF formats our file according to RuboCop and now our file has been formatted. So we're getting all of these great features out of just these two gems. Also, uh, my LSP stuff, if I go to references, I can see all, all the places where session helper is used. And if I go to definition, it immediately brings me to the definition for this module. And that's solar graph. That's our LSP stuff, and that's our linting and formatting stuff. So we use RuboCop as our linter slash formatter. And all of these things give us a really great Ruby on Rails setup. This is how I use Ruby on Rails. Now, as we went over things in NeoVim for noobs, I like to think that I gave you the tools to sort of build this stuff out yourself for any language that you want to use. So feel free to ask me about any other languages. I can look some stuff up for you. Leave a comment below, but this is how you do it for Ruby on Rails. And this is how I use Ruby on Rails in NeoVim for my day job as a professional Ruby on Rails API developer. And so I hope you guys liked this format of video. I wanted to give back to you guys because you've all shown us such great support support for NeoVim for noobs, Tmux for noobs, all the videos we've done. And I wanted to just answer some of the questions that you've had throughout our time together. Now, if you have any other burning questions, we're going to be doing this as a series at least monthly. So feel free to ask them in the comments below. And members, I'm going to see you asking your questions first. You have special badges and you show up on a special page in YouTube. I'll be answering your questions. So be sure to ask. And hey, thanks nerds.